Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I'm getting ready to put the brush cutter on the tractor and do some cutting. We have quite a bit of ground that is dedicated to hay production, and then we've got the area that is around the house and the buildings that we mow, and then there are some in-between areas that can't really be baled and can't be mowed with a mower. And that's what we have to brush cut a couple times a year. We've got this hill over here that's too rocky. We have the area behind the Quonset hut that's going to be a wood yard, and it has too much tree material and logs and everything piled down there. And then we've got the back corner of the property where the drop-off is. And so we always have to brush hog those areas. But today I'm adding one more to the list, and that is we're going to try to push up into this hill by about the height of this tree. I mentioned in the last video that I've made the decision this tree is coming down and it's coming down pretty soon. So I want to prepare a place for it to land. Now if you look at the tree right here, I don't know how well you can tell, I'd say straight up and down is here and we're leaned just that much. Not a lot, but enough to matter and then if you look at the branches, there's a little bit more weight hanging out on this side than there is the back side. It also has a little bit of lean away from where we're standing. Not much, but just, just enough to matter. And the reason I'm wanting to deal with that tree is it's close enough that e if even half or two thirds of that tree were to split and fall, it could land on the building. And if it fell that way, it would land on the Quonset hut. So what I'm debating right now is possibly trying to get a cable up as high as I can in the tree and run a line out to the skid loader parked, you know, 75 to 100 feet up the hill. And after I make my initial cut, put some tension on it and make sure it goes where I want it to. And to do that, I need to clear up here, see what kind of obstacles I've got and make sure I'm going to be able to do that. After I do this part of the brush cutting, I'm going to get an angle from this direction and kind of show you the lean and where we're at in relation to the buildings. Well, if any of you guys have any feedback on the best way to deal with this tree, you can leave it in the comments section. But for now, that's enough talking. I'm going to get the brush cutter put on the tractor and we'll get started. Coming in here to get the tractor and we had kind of a big day. I got called into grandpa duty because Zayden had his crown come off of his tooth. And he had to go to the dentist, which isn't a lot of fun when they put the drill in there. But he didn't cry at all. He got two John Deere tractor stickers. Now, what are we going to do with those? Um, we're going to put it on the tractor today. I was thinking about the rocks. You want to put them up here on the rocks? Yeah. And you're going to put one on your tractor and one on mine? Yeah. Okay. Which, pick which one you want to do. I want to do this one. All right. That looks like a big old six or seven series with a, a, a baler behind it. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so we got it peeled. Let's put this one over here. Okay, peel the back off. Okay, right here. Yeah. Oh, your ball. That's the basketball. So cool. Now I need to go put mine on my tractor. Yeah. Let's drive down there with the tractor. Now every time we'll see that sticker, we'll remember Zayden doesn't cry at the dentist. And now we're going to go put a sticker on your tractor. Then we'll get to cutting. A couple videos back, I shared that this is the most difficult implement I have for taking on and off the tractor. Because it's not quick hitch and it's got hydraulics and it's just a pain. Not to mention the fact it's 940 pounds. So what I've been doing with anything that's a hassle or that I need to move, I've been building custom pallets that fit that implement. And I just put a stack of pallets under the back side of this and that's going to make it easy. I had tried setting it on different things before but I think I just didn't get anything tall enough. So I have the back of that set on four pallets and it's going to hold it up straight. So if I build a pallet for this, it needs to be about four pallets high on the back side and ground level on the front side. And then I can easily move this around. So 
So while I'm taking this off, I'll tell you a funny story. That was my grandson, Zayden. He's five years old, and he is the stereotypical five-year-old boy. So he wears cowboy boots and blue jeans every day. It's 100 degrees out here. He's wearing cowboy boots. We, and he's got a little Power Wheels style bulldozer with dual lever control. It's kind of a cool little thing. But we go in there, he's gonna ride that while I'm getting this set up. And there's a little tiny frog on the ground in the garage. I showed it to him and he got excited, said he was gonna go put that in the pond. Well, I don't know if that frog wants to be in the pond. Why don't you go put him in the yard? After I see him set it down the yard, I come back up here and start working. And I look down there, and I see him running across the yard. He's chasing that frog. And so I walk down there just to see what he's doing. He's found the frog. He's back in his bulldozer. I said, uh, do you still have that frog? He said, yeah, I'm going to keep him. I thought, okay, I'm going to give him the speech about, like, let's get a box and maybe set it up for him. He said, I put it in my boot, and I'll just keep him in there. I've never been a frog, and I can't imagine living in a five-year-old's boot is the your dream scenario. So we've got a bucket uh, set up over there, and he's doing a scavenger hunt now. I said, what do you think a frog needs? I said, maybe some grass, like a worm. Get him so, some worms or a cricket and put in there with him. Maybe he'll eat those. So he's off building a frog habitat, I guess. That frog's sticking his tongue out. Yeah, this frog. You think he'll? Whoa! You let him jump away. See these spots? Yeah. That is a cool frog. You want to show the video of the frog? Yeah. Hey, look! I have a frog. Let's lift you up a little so they can see better. See? Not I... over there, right in front of this. <laughs> and we're gonna be nice to the frog too, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. If anybody knows how to care for a little frog like that, yeah, other, let us know. Other than maybe letting him go when somebody forgets. But, oh, well, it looks so pretty. It is a cool frog. I just don't know how to take care of a frog. We, they, I think uh, they probably eat bugs, don't they? Yeah, and they pick the. They the stick, tongue. stick their tongue out. Yeah, like, like that. Yeah. All right. Well, you. Be nice to that frog, see if you can find him something to eat. He might want a worm. Maybe you have to be a little worm because he's a little frog. Still gotta hook up the PTO shaft. Can this, I do that? No, it's too hard to push. But this big one right here is called the PTO shaft and it makes the mower spin. You're about to hear the way my brush cutter bangs and clangs whenever I start it up and shut it down, which is just a result of the back edge of it being bent in from running over large brush. And I've straightened it a couple times, but it just keeps getting bent back. So it is what it is.
You might have saw that little man is on the tractor with me right now, and I let him make one pass and then sent him in the house for the rest of the work because brush hogging is just not a good ride-along activity for a little guy. Where you see me turning here is the end of our property line in this direction. And this square over here has been impossible to mow since we bought it. There were a couple of really big rock piles. There was a slab of concrete. There were multiple tree stumps and one tree that was about ready to come down. And I've cleared all those trees and stumps and rock piles and got it where I can at least brush cut this. But as you're going to see in a minute, it's still not quite where it needs to be because I kind of took a beating working this. Well, that sucked. This has never really been passable, and I've tried to make it where it could be mowed, and there's a lot of work left to do before it gets to that. I'll walk you through this and show you what I've got left. I've ripped out a lot here and there's a lot left. Okay, this is where I ripped out the concrete. As I walk around here, you're going to see there's just big rocks jutting up out of the ground everywhere. And the further up the hill I go, the worse it gets until it's just a carpet of rocks. And I'm just going to have to get up here and get all this ripped out or completely let it go and I don't want to let it go so you'll see that in an upcoming video the big rock removal project this part I mainly wanted to make a path up through here so I could find out what's there and make sure that if I want to park the skid loader up there and tie it off 
I've got the ability to do that. Now, before we move on to the bigger areas, I just want to try to get a straight look at this tree and determine which lean it has. I think it has a little bit of lean that direction, and I know it has lean this direction. All right, let's see if we can tell anything here. The camera's straight. Now, I'm standing up straight. My arm is up straight. See the base? And then the top. It's leaning a little bit that way and a little bit away from us. So this area now is kind of a cluttered mess. You can see the tree I took down recently and all the mulch piles I brought from that property cleanup job and our burn pit. And I'm going to turn all of this into a wood yard hopefully in the next week but i've got a couple other projects that i have to schedule in at the same time i just went and picked up the overflow pipe for the pond yesterday and i'll be doing that and then i've got that other property cleanup job that i bid that i told him i was going to try to start by the end of next week so We'll see if I can get out here tomorrow and maybe finish cleaning up this tree. Now if you notice, with it being summer and not fall, all the trees should have leaves on them. But you can see three or four large trees on the left side of the screen that are bare. I'm going to say those trees are dead. And that means it's time to take them down before they fall on their own and rot on the ground. So, that's some more tree felling I've got to do, and it's a lot of firewood for this winter. If you notice on the right side of the screen, our hay has just been baled. And that's my favorite time to get out here and do the brush cutting, because I can clearly see what they baled and what they didn't. And I'm working to expand the area that we can produce hay on. And that may include taking out some more trees that are at the far end of the screen right now so that this can all extend back into the last area you're about to see me cut. And now you're going to see a daring rescue mission, as I've got a 30-minute battery life on the drone, and I looked over as I was finishing this area up, which apparently takes about 30 minutes to cut, and I noticed the drone was about to land on the roof of the Quonset hut. And the last thing I wanted to do was get up there and climb all the way on top to get it down. So I came driving over as fast as a tractor goes and saved it just in time. We've got two areas left. This field right here has another tree that I've taken down back here. And then there's the slump is what I've been calling it and the junk pile that was left for us. And I'm not going that direction tonight. I am going to try to get the rest of this mode. So, let me better get on it. So we have 20 acres and currently about five of it is hayfield. And even if I set aside the area that we already use and save an area that, that is wooded, we could still easily increase from five acres to 10 acres of hay just by cleaning up the areas like you see here. And I've already been working on that quite a bit. If we can expand it enough, I think I might start baling it myself. I have two trees that are down at the far end of this section that you really can't see from these shots. And those need cleaned up. And then there's a bunch of brush piles that are just too big for me to mess with tonight. 
but they've completely grown over with weeds and can't even tell what's what. So I'll have videos cleaning up all of that as well. There's never a shortage of work to do when you're maintaining a property, but luckily I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. Even if certain days I don't enjoy all the dust that's blowing in my face right now and sticking to me, big picture, I enjoy having this property to take care of. All right, well, at some point the camera shut off, but it's all done. And I can't see a darn thing, but feels good to accomplish a little bit of something. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.